Next up, we have your march in place. So just like our walk in place, we'll go opposite arm, opposite leg with a nice tall and neutral spine. As we perform this movement, I want you to think about driving your knee up while keeping the upper back locked in place and core active. As you do this, we'll go not only knee up, but also toe up. So knee up, toe up, knee up, toe up. You'll feel the muscles on the front of your shin activate. And this would be opposed to just a neutral foot or a toe down. So toe down or neutral. We want to drive knee up, toe up, and then switch. So for this movement, we'll go ahead and we'll put 20 seconds on the clock and we'll begin. Next up, we have our forward big steps. During this movement, we will take a bigger step than our typical stride. And so that might look a little bit different for everyone. As you reach out in your forward big step, we wanna make sure toes are pointed straight ahead. Oftentimes when we're in a position like this, our body will try to rotate and stabilize on our back leg. And so we're no longer in that straight ahead position. So if you're unable to balance momentarily in this big of a stance, go ahead and shorten up your big steps for the time being. So as you reach out in your big step, opposite arm, opposite leg, just like with our walk in place. And we want to make sure that our knee is not moving forward over our toes, especially if you have any type of history with knee pain. We want to make sure that the knee is staying behind the toes at the very least, but ideally if there has been any situations of knee pain that it is even behind your ankle, ankle bone. I'm sorry, ankle bone. So where you're not at this perpendicular position, you're even further back. So this would be less stress on the knee because we're going to recruit more muscles in the back side of the body. So here would be our big steps reaching out. Because of the space that I have available, I will turn around every couple of steps. If you have a wide open space, a long hallway, this would be something that you could keep going and not necessarily have to turn around every couple of steps. So again, opposite arm, opposite leg, toes straight ahead, reaching out, using your core and your shoulders, everything should be active in your upper body and that will absolutely help with that stability. If things are loose, it's really easy to be very wobbly and so when everything is rigid and moving as one unit and only certain, certain joints are actively moving, everything else is stabilizing, it will be a lot easier to reach further and get greater activation in through the muscles that we're targeting. So we're gonna put 20 seconds on the clock, have you get into your standing or upright posture, and then before you even take your first step, kind of think about, okay, opposite arm, opposite leg, and that way when we take that first step, we're already starting in that correct movement pattern. Here we go. Next step, we have our backward steps. For this movement, we'll start off with a slight forward lean as you reach back. So for most of the movements we've talked about is this upright posture, and that still holds true on this movement, but we have that lean because we're reaching back, but we're still in a nice straight line. We'll reach back. As we reach back with one leg, that, that arm will come forward. So here we're in that opposite arm, opposite leg, and then we'll switch them both. So don't be afraid to slow down this movement so that you know you have that opposite arm, opposite leg movement pattern. It can be amazing how, once you get it in a forward position, how different it feels in a backwards moving position. So slight forward lean, wanna make sure everything is active so that we're not hunched, that we have some good activation, and that all those muscles are active and helping us stabilize so that we have really good balance as we're moving backwards. So again, just a quick demonstration, reaching back, 
opposite arm, opposite forward, stay in front, and then you'll switch them both. So we'll go ahead, we'll get set up for your backward steps. We'll put 20 seconds on the clock and we'll begin. Next up are our side steps. So we'll begin with toes straight ahead and hands on the hips or by the side. When we start in this position, it can be really common to want to rotate and lead with that moving leg, but we wanna keep an eye on things and make sure that as we're reaching out, those toes are staying straight ahead. So we're truly working our hip stabilizers. So toes will stay straight ahead throughout the entire duration of the movement. And as we're doing our side to side movement, we want to keep your hips and shoulders a consistent height so that we're not go traveling up and down each repetition. So toes straight ahead, nice consistent height. And if, if you see from the side here, I want to point out the position of my knees. So my knees will be behind my toes. If you deal with a lot of knee pain or stiffness, you could, uh, as long as everything's locked in place here, you could push those knees back even further or stand up higher to take some pressure off of them. But we really wanna make sure that we're not in this position as we're doing your side steps. That instead you push those knees back, torso comes slightly forward or up. So that, that would all be that angle of the lower leg. One last thing to mention on our side step. So we're, when we're in this position, our trail leg or the leg that's staying in place, I like to think about pushing with this leg so that you get a lot of activation on the inside and the outside. And then you're reaching with this leg. So you're actively pulling across. So push and reach and then reset. So here will be my push and reach and reset. And when you can feel that push and you can feel that reach, you're really stabilizing the legs from all, all sides. What this can look like if there's not that activity is when you push and you reach, you, you kind of rotate or fall into this position versus this position. So again, when we reach, we wanna make sure this knee is not falling in, this knee is not collapsing in, and I'm kind of over-exaggerating. Even if it is in this position, you still have that room to widen everything to activate those glute muscles. So go ahead and keep an eye on your toes so they're straight ahead. We wanna make sure those knees are back and that we're traveling that same distance. And as we do that, we wanna make sure everything is active, we're not collapsing inward. And if you find that you can't reach out very far without collapsing inward, then it is best to step and, make, and, and travel a shorter distance with each step. So that will make it easier to drive out, reset, drive out, then reset, stabilizing again from all directions, making sure our knees are healthy on the front and the sides. So let's go ahead, we're gonna get set up by putting 20 seconds on the clock, slight bend in those knees and the hips, toes straight ahead, and begin. Next up, we have our narrow steps. Anytime that we take our stance and make it more narrow than a hip width base, we will be challenging our balance and stability. For our narrow steps, that this may look different person to person. So if you really struggle with your balance, then I would encourage you to bring your base in a little bit and to walk fairly close together as opposed to that hip width position. If you have pretty good balance or if you have some kind of support or something that you feel comfortable walking along, I'd encourage you to go to a heel to toe position. 
It's perfectly fine to look down to see what position your feet are in, but once you have a good idea, go ahead and bring your eyes straight ahead so that you're now relying on how your body is feeling and adjusting your balance that way versus a visual feedback that's constant. So heel to toe would be a great base or stance to aim for. If you feel more comfortable doing heel to toe with a wall right next to you or a countertop, that's perfectly fine as well. We wanna keep those eyes straight ahead as we perform this movement. So again, you could use the wall for support or just knowing that it's there. You could also put your hands out straight out to the side or slightly down. That will also help with balance as well. So let's go ahead, we'll get set up for our narrow steps. We'll put 20 seconds on the clock and we'll practice walking either that heel to toe or a little bit narrower than a hip width base. The last movement we have in this series is your modified jumping jack. For this movement, we won't actually add in the impact of jumping, but we'll get a, most of the benefits from the movement itself. So we'll reach out and tap. We won't necessarily transfer the weight, but we will reach out activating our lateral leg muscles. And then the other cue that I want you to focus on is reaching up nice and tall. Sometimes movement patterns like this where we're, the, we're moving quickly, we don't necessarily have any loading, we can start to think the faster I go, the better, and we start to shorten things in. So either elbows bend, we're not reaching out as far. I'd encourage you to reach out and reach up first and foremost before adding that speed. And then when you add the speed, we're only changing the speed, we're not also then changing the movement pattern. So nice and tall on the arms, good full range of motion, reaching out and tapping, but not transferring the weight. So we'll wrap it up, we'll put 20 seconds on the clock, and we'll begin. This will wrap up our daily routine walkthrough video. You can refer back to this video anytime you have a question on any of the movements and how to perform them or what some of those common compensations are. The next video of our daily routine is a much shorter version where we go in 20 second intervals each movement back to back to back. So that resource would be great to do as a warm up on your off days, in addition to a workout if you need some movement later on in the day, or if it's a workout day and you don't fully feel up to your workout, maybe you're starting to fight a bug or just not feeling great, go ahead and go through the daily routine. It will help everything get moving without wearing any one area down. Good job.